that we are using for our subject this morning from the scripture uh, that has been read and the prayer that has been prayed, we will use for our topic this morning, I will tell of God's goodness. I will tell of God's goodness. Why? Because God is still working. Now, I know that all of us have had a celebration for a new year. And because we've had our celebration and we see that God has brought us this far, we are going to trust him to move us forward this morning. We are going to trust him to give us the grace and the strength we need so that we will be able to tell of his goodness as we go forth in this year. And I thank you for uh, our worship leaders for uh, getting us started off to a good start this morning, even from Sunday school through uh, our opening, our call to worship, our powerful prayer, and the reading of the scripture has been so powerful. Now, let me just start off by letting you know something this morning, because this is somewhat of a personal testimony. As I sat in silence during my quiet time, uh, I seized the opportunity for my mind to reflect on the past two years relative to COVID. It became clear to me that God was doing a magnificent work in, the, in my life and in the lives of his people. You see, I, I, I considered what God has done for us and continues to do for us during the past two years. I could see the move of God as he spoke through his word with emphasis placed on the scripture that you heard read for us today. Church, I look back over my life and the goodness of God was so pronounced. It caused my spirit to leap for joy. I could not hold my peace. I began to render. Uh, I told you this is a personal testimony. To render began uh, to testify to myself, by myself, and speaking aloud I will tell of your goodness. New Year's Day last year, around mid-afternoon, I received a call informing me of the death of my oldest brother. Prior to that, a similar call came informing me of the death of my oldest sister, which happened on a New Year's Eve night. And then it was Christmas Eve several, several years earlier. I watched as one of my younger sisters uh, took her last breath. I share this with you, uh, not so that it sounds morbid or that you may become sad, but because the flesh wanted me to focus on what was lost. But spiritually, I am strengthened through the pain which granted me the desire to share with you today the power of God's goodness and his everlasting love for us. So I began penning the words for today's message. Like the psalmist, I began thanking God for being my refuge, my rock, and my fortress. Despite, despite the threat of COVID, and other calamities, he continues to be my hope and my rock in a weary land. He is my shelter in the time of the storms that come in my life. And I began, I remain confident and I remain committed to giving him praise. And to steadfastly in my desire, I'm steadfast in my desire to tell of his goodness. 
to all that I meet, whatever, wherever I go, regardless of the surroundings, I am fully persuaded to keep giving him praise and honor. My mom and them used to sing a song that says, talk about me as much as you please. But the more you talk, I'm going to bend my knees. And sharing God's unconditional love for us, everlasting love for us. Because I know where God has brought me from. And I will tell of his goodness all the day long friends i understand i do i understand the importance of giving praise and speaking of his goodness you see i know what it means to appreciate longevity I, for if it had not been for god on my side i don't know where i would be psalms 71 reminded me that my testimony my testimony your testimony is your story and my testimony is my story and we are overcome by our testimony I, I was also reminded that only two of the nine biological children birthed between my parents uh, are, are still living. And I praise God because I'm one of the two. Therefore, sharing your testimony is vital uh, to leading others to Christ for, uh, uh, for my legal, for my legal minded individuals on, uh, on this Zoom worship. Let me add this sidebar for you to tell others of God's goodness. It's much like being called to take the witness stand in court. Witnesses are bound by law and an oath to tell the truth about what they know and what they have seen. As a believer, I am bound by the word of God to tell you of his goodness. What would happen if the witness took the stand and was asked for his or her testimony, but never opened their mouth? What would happen? I'm not sure the judge would be pleased with that type of a response. The same scenario happens every day in the court of public opinion. That is your, uh, your everyday world. There comes a time when you have to do more than wear that cross around your neck. You have to be more, you have to do more than wear your favorite Christian t-shirt. You have to do more, my sisters and brothers, other than carry uh, uh, a book called the Bible around with you. You have to do a lot more. Uh, it, you will eventually have to open your mouth and speak of God's goodness. You have to tell what Jesus has done in your life. First Peter 2 and 9 says it this way. But you are a chosen people. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. God's special possession that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness to walk in the wonderful and marvelous light. Like the psalmist, I tell you, God has brought me through many dangers, toils, and snares. So I tell of his goodness because I now understand that he does not allow troubles and hardships to come our way due to a lack of his love for us, but that through these difficulties, our faith in him is deepened, it's renewed, and it is strengthened. These, these life changes teaches us how to depend totally 
totally on the one who brought us out of darkness in order that we might walk in his marvelous light. Thus I tell you, I will tell you, I will tell of God's goodness. How long, Dorinda? I will tell of his goodness all the day long. First church, I was truly blessed by the following uh, I wills. If you go back and read the text in different uh, translations, there are several I wills in this text. Keeping in mind that the word will may be used as a noun or a verb. However, for the sake of time, we will explore the wills used in this text as a verb. Each one is used as a verb. And go with me briefly as we just kind of explore this and because this really um, added joy and strength and gave me a desire to, to tell of his goodness as we move forward in 2022. I tell you, when I look back on where God has brought us from, I could not help but just read each of these verses, starting with I will and allowing them to minister to me. Verse 15 started out, I, I will tell of your goodness. And it asks, how long, how long, how long, how long will you tell it? Will you tell it as long as things are going good? Will you tell it as long as family members are staying free from COVID? Will you tell it as long as you got a bank account? Will you tell it as long as you are working and you see uh, the daylight without having to struggle? Will you tell it when you're in the valley? Or will you just tell it when you're on the mountaintop? Will you tell it when sickness is wrecked? in your body or will you tell it when you are healthy will you tell it when your child is in trouble or will you tell it when the judge tell you that the child can go free when will you tell it i'm gonna tell it all the day long Despite the fact that man cannot understand nor explain this type of loyalty and commitment, I will speak of his unmerited favor and salvation. I will tell others of his redemption and his power. I will tell of his goodness for deliverance, his ability to rescue me from the wiles of the enemy and provide a way of escape from the pestilent snares that is like the pandemic. I will tell it. I will praise God. I will praise God anyhow any and i'm that's not correct grandma and i know it for you scholars it is not but anyhow i'm gonna praise him regardless of the situation then we move down to verse 16 that says i will go in the strength of the lord god i will proclaim your goodness yours alone god yours alone ain't that good news ain't that good news now, I know when you all go back and visit uh, uh, YouTube and look at the scripture, you're going to say, well, that preacher was kind of wild this morning. She kept using incorrect grammar, but that's okay. That's okay because God looks at the heart. God looks at the heart and he knows exactly what. And sometimes I think we need to get out of um, that sophistication. We need to get out of our mood to always want to be politically and um, uh, grammatically correct. Sometimes we got to get, we have to get down on other people's level in order to pull them up to where God wants them to be. Because you see, everybody don't understand but the simple things that you do, the simple things that you say, the simple things, the simple way you act, the simple things, the kind of embrace that you give people, let them know, child, God loves you. I don't care what the world may say about you. Child, child of God, God loves you. And because of that, because I can truly talk to people on their level, not saying that I'm discounting or discrediting them, not saying that they don't have value and worth because they do, not saying that, but my, my attitude, my uh, approach to them, it just might be that thing that calls them to come to Christ. 
So I'm going to bless him. I'm going to bless him wherever I go. I'm going to tell of his goodness. And then, and then we come down to verse 22 that says, I will indeed praise you with the heart. I will praise your faithfulness, my God. And of course, most of you think about the harp as being an instrument. But my harp is my heart. My harp is my lips. My harp is what I can say and do that sounds, uh, that tells the truth about God's goodness. My harp, I will play hymns to you. The Holy One of Israel. What harp, preacher? What harp? What harp will you play? What harp will you play hymns? The chords of every beat of my heart. That's the harp. That's the harp that I will pray, that I will play. Now you see verse 23 reads, and this is where we get hung up. Verse 23, because you got to do something else here. Verse 23 says, I will shout. Ha, I will shout for joy as I play for you. With my whole being, I will sing because you have saved me. I will sing because you have saved me. I'm not going to sing because of what uh, uh, he's done for just Marsha. I'm not going to sing and shout just because what he did for Roy and for Millie. I'm not going to shout because he what he did uh, for uh, attorney uh, uh, Davis. I'm going to shout and sing because of what God has done for Dorinda. What has he done for you to lately? What has he done for you, Dorinda? He brought me out of the muck and the mire. He brought me uh, and placed my feet on a rock. He brought me out of sickness. He brought me out of sin. He brought me and he caused my life to be changed, to turn around for the good. God, I will bless. I will tell of your goodness. I'm going to tell of your goodness, God, wherever I go. I'm going to tell of your goodness as long as I have breath. I'm going to tell of your goodness, God, as long as my heart beats. I'm going to tell, even in death, I'm going to tell of your goodness. How? Because I'm not going to be afraid to transition because you will be able to see what God has done. We are the light of the world. We are the light of the world. We are his, we are his voice, we are his hand, we are his feet. And the sermon, people may not understand as they look at YouTube, but they will understand as they see you in your community. They will understand when they see how you treat each other in the household of faith. They will understand when they see how you treat that person who may not look like you, who may not dress like you, who may not talk like you in that line at the grocery store. They will see it. And because your life will speak, may the life I live, may the life I live, May the life I live speak for me. May the life you live speak for you. I will bless. I will bless and I will tell of his goodness all day long. You see, church, this is a season. This is the season that we sing. This is the season we sing. Because we are happy. This is the season we sing because we are free. You say free from what? You are free from the sin that had you weighed down. You are free from the sickness that was racking your body. Why? Because you told of God's goodness. 
his eye, his eye, first church, his eye, first church, 2022, his eye is on the sparrow. And I know that he's watching over us. I know this. How do you know? Every sign in the book shows us that he is with us. Everything that you put your hands to, he is blessing. Every thought that you entertain in your mind, He's watching, he's watching, he hears all, he sees all, he knows all. This, my friends, is the reason why I will tell of God's goodness. I hope you will tell of God's goodness today. I know that there are those on this, on this in this worship. You're hurting, I understand that. I understand that the pain is so hard to bear. I understand it. I didn't say I know how you feel, but I do understand it. And I know that we serve a good God. We serve a God that loves us. We serve a God that's with us. And I don't know about you this morning, but I invite you as Brother Perry comes with our invitational hymn, I invite you this morning to make a commitment to yourself and to God, not to me, but to yourself and to God that says, I will tell of your goodness all the day long. Tell of his goodness. Come on, Brother Perry. Let's tell of God's goodness this morning through song. Come on, let's praise him. Let's thank him for his goodness.